and talk about the, the three trades you made and how are you going to use all three? Yeah, um, well, I'll start with the two that, uh, that we just made today. Um, as you all heard, we traded uh, Alex Scherf uh, to the Twins for right-handed reliever Hansel Robles. Uh, and we also traded Michael Chavis to the Pirates for left-handed reliever Austin Davis. Um, both these guys uh, will be good additions uh, to our uh, bullpen depth. Uh, Robles is a guy with power stuff, uh, mainly fastball changeup, but uh, a power arsenal, really good stuff. Uh, a lot of experience. And, you know, as, as everybody has seen, our bullpen's done a great job this year. And we wanted to back that up by getting them uh, reinforcements just to make sure we have as many good options as possible down the stretch. Um, we're excited for, you know, his power stuff, uh, you know, playing uh, in our mix with the, with the already uh, great crew we have down, down there. And as for Davis, um, you know, more of a classic left-handed reliever. This was an area that we went in feeling like uh, we could strengthen ourselves uh, in terms of the depth of, of lefty relievers in the, in the organization and in the upper levels of the organization. Uh, you know, tough to move Michael, obviously, first round pick here, uh, who's been here for a long time, is really special to a lot of people here. But ultimately, we felt this was a price worth paying for someone uh, who we feel has the upside to help us. Uh, you know, he, he's got, uh, you know, good fastball breaking ball combination uh, that we think is going to help us, especially as we as we head down the stretch. And we know we're going to be facing some uh, some good left handed hitters. And then, uh, you know, last night we acquired Kyle Schwarber uh, from the Nationals for a uh, prospect right hander, Aldo Ramirez. Uh, you know, simply put, we think Kyle Schwarber is one of the most impactful hitters that changed hands this week. Uh, and we had identified going into this week uh, that uh, a left-handed bat was going to be a, a target of ours and a, and a huge addition uh, to our lineup. We already feel we have a really good lineup. Uh, Kyle, uh, once he's healthy, he's currently rehabbing hamstring injury, has a chance to be as productive as anybody in the lineup. And uh, we're really excited for what he's going to mean beyond what he produces on the field. Uh, this guy is a winner, um, an incredible clubhouse presence, and we feel really good about what he's going to bring to our mix. Can you talk about your starting ro rotation? And do you feel, even with the addition of sale, is it strong enough to, to um, last in the postseason? Well, we feel really good about that group. They've helped get us where we've gotten. And, you know, we're about to get deeper and about to add a lot more impact. We certainly look this week for ways to add. And, and you know, I told you guys that going in. Um, and we had a lot of different conversations about a lot of different possibilities. Obviously, if we had seen something, if we had matched up on something that we thought made sense uh, for us and, and made sense to the organization, we would have pulled the trigger. Ultimately, uh, despite a ton of conversations, uh, you know, we didn't line up on anything. Uh, but that's, you know, that, that's not uh, the, the fact that we tried to add to the group isn't an indictment of the, of the guys we have. We really like the group we have. We we're just looking for any possible way to make us stronger as long as we thought it was going to be helpful to the organization. Um, how, do you, how do you see uh, using Kyle Schwarber? Obviously, defense, it seemed like uh, first base was a big need, but he doesn't have any experience there really. Yeah, um, you know, in a perfect world, we would have uh, been able to get someone with Kyle's impact uh, who also has uh, a lot of first base experience. He doesn't, um, you know, he, we are going to take a look at him over there. Uh, you know, he's excited to do it. Uh, this is someone I would not bet against uh, to, to really do anything that uh, he sets his mind to on a baseball field. Uh, this is a guy who blew out his knee and hit 400 in the World Series in the same year. Uh, so I wouldn't bet against him. But even if... Uh, that doesn't come to pass. We think the impact of the bat uh, is, is huge and there's going to be a lot of ways for him to help us. It, it, it's going to uh, allow us to feature much stronger lineups, especially against right-handed pitching. It's going to allow us to take care of our guys down the stretch, uh, give more days off when needed to some of the guys we've been leaning on. Uh, it's going to deepen our bench, uh, you know, when he's in there and when he's not. Uh, so, and, and you know, if we get a go, it's, it's a weapon we can really, really leverage uh, in very important games at the end. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we're excited to see what what what, for, what what working with him at first base is going to bring. But we really like the impact uh, even without that. And what do you hear about his timing as far as when you think you'll get him back? Well, we want to get our, you know, get our hands on him and uh, get him, you know, get a plan together uh, with our medical staff. Uh, we went into this with the expectation that we're probably looking at a couple of weeks. 
Um, he, the hamstring injury that he suffered uh, at the beginning of the month was, was pretty severe, but he's made really good progress. He's been hitting on the field for a while now. It's really just a running component in there. Uh, of course, you all saw how hot he was with the bat when he went down. He's done a lot of work uh, hitting-wise to, to stay there. Hopefully, when he comes back, he'll be able to pick up right where he left off. Ryan, do you have any um, roster moves, I guess, for tonight's game? Uh, we're still working through that. We're going to obviously announce them before the game, but uh, we have a lot of different moving parts here to figure out, uh, you know, who, who, who's coming when and, and the, the order of operations there. So I don't have anything uh, too specific to announce right now, but we will have it all uh, sorted out by the time the game starts. Um, is it hard? And I know you always preach, uh, you know, patience and that type of stuff, but is it difficult to see, you know, like the Yankees adding Gallo and Rizzo and then the Blue Jays with Barrios, the Rays with Cruz and not get the itch to, you know, go all in. Obviously, Schwarber's a big move, but um, just kind of to, to avoid, you know, making moves you might regret later. Yeah, of course it is. Um, we want to win. And we're really passionate about what we, what we do. We know how hard it is to get to this position and we don't take that for granted. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I've said it all along, and I mean it. We want to do. We want to win a lot, and we want we want to win every year. And if you want the future to be really good, you have to take care of the future, and you have to care about that. Uh, and that's a very difficult tightrope to walk. It's a it's a tough balance. I think it was really tough this year in what I think turned out to be a, a big time seller's market in a lot of cases. Um, but you know, that, that's why we just need to, to stay, to stay strong in our plan. We, we, and try to walk that tightrope as much as we can. Um, I would note a couple of things. One, I don't want to sell short. You know, I'm glad you mentioned Schwarber, the additions that we made. Like I said, I think Kyle's impact with the bat is on, on a par with anybody who was traded in the last 48, 72 hours. Um, you know, as soon as we can get him back on the field. Uh, but the other thing I would note is that part of the reason why we are here this year and why we are in first place at the trade deadline is because of contributions that came from people who are here because we were taking that longer view and because we weren't selling out for short-term gratification at every turn. That doesn't mean you will always reap those short-term rewards when you do the right thing for the long term. But if you don't, you will definitely pay for it uh, in the long term. You might not get what you're looking for in the short term. And uh, a lot of what we saw today that our, uh, our competitors did uh, they, they were in a position to do because they had done the right thing and the discipline thing over a long period of time to build up that organizational strength and to build up a huge trove of young players that they could then either use to help their clubs or to move in trades. And I'm really happy with where we've come, but we have a long way to go. And so to you know, turn our backs on what got us here and especially some of uh, you know, what got us here also got us the, the short-term rewards that put us in first place right now. I think to turn our backs on that would really, at the end of the day, be irresponsible. And I don't think we'd be doing right uh, by anybody if we did that. And just to follow up, um, how much of a role did staying under the CBT threshold play this week or you know, in the lead up, it seems like, um, from what's out there? And obviously, you're probably not going to get to the specific numbers, but it seems like you're kind of walking a tightrope there. Yeah, we were mindful of it. I think we have to be because there are implications to crossing that line that go beyond just money. And some of those implications actually hurt our competitiveness and could hurt our, uh, you know, the, the, our talent base over time. So we were mindful of it, but it was never a hard line. We just looked at it that uh, I mean, we did explore a lot of possibilities this week that would have taken us over. Uh, we just looked at it as something that um, it's something we need to factor in. You know, was it worth uh, was it worth the cost? And ultimately, there were some things that we explored that we certainly would have done that for, uh, but we just didn't feel uh, that it was worth uh, the cost uh, in, you know, in, in talent, let alone, you know, the additional effects of, of going over the line. I'm, uh, two questions. Um, it, it, it seemed earlier in the week, the consensus throughout the game was that it was going to be more of a buyer's market and that prices would come down in the last 24 hours. Um, why do you suppose that changed? And in reference to what you just said about, you know, um, being mindful of protecting your inventory of prospects, do you think that as much progress as you've made, you haven't quite deepened it enough to maybe make some deals that other teams did and that you weren't quite comfortable to do at this point? Yeah, both both are good questions. And look, it, you know, I, there are people that out there that might disagree with me calling it a seller's market. Uh, everybody can have their own assessment of what of what went on. 
we just tried to stay active in as many fronts as we possibly could uh, and get a sense of what the asks would have been and, and were from us, you know, for certain players that move. And, uh, you know, we were prepared to, to do the things that we thought made sense. And, you know, that's not to say that the future always wins every time. We were prepared to, to pay some long-term costs as long as we felt it was reasonable, felt it was appropriate. We just didn't. Uh, why that happened, I don't know. Uh, it was really interesting to see uh, everything that was happening all around us. But I think the worst thing you can do at, at the end of the day is, is start being reactive to that instead of, you know, staying with what you know you need to take care of. And, and like I said, I think part of why we are where we are is because we have stayed focused on the priorities that we have and some of the people who have gotten us where, where we are are here because we kept that focus. Um, as far as the other question, uh, look, I, my mindset is always going to be uh, that we could always have more talent, right? Uh, that you never feel like you have enough. At the same time, the more that you have, uh, the more you know responsible I think it is to then you know make some of those big moves. There's a lot of different things that that go into that. Because you know, the more that you have, the, the the brighter you think your future outlook is even with, you know, spending some of that currency now. So, you know, I'll never think it's strong enough, but ultimately we just tried to weigh that, you know, which were closer calls and some of which frankly weren't even all that close. And, uh, this month, this month the, uh, both the rotation and the bullpen have, uh, have you know, the, the numbers have gone down in, in both cases. Uh, how much of a concern is the state of the pitching staff moving forward? And, you know, do you think that uh, the two bullpen moves that you've made plus Chris uh, will be sufficient to, um, to, to get every, to get the entire back to the performance level we need? Yeah, we are we are in the in the middle of kind of a longer and a tougher stretch. Uh, we're looking forward to August bringing us a few more uh, more off days than we've experienced recently, uh, and there has been an effect to that, a cumulative effect, I think, uh, you know, on, on our group, uh, and that's with uh, our coaching staff and our medical staff and the players themselves doing an amazing job um, to try to maintain themselves, uh, and I think that's shown, you know, so far in, in how healthy they've been, but certainly. Uh, there have been dips in performance here and there. Uh, these things go, you know, go in cycle sometimes. Not everybody's going to be uh, at their peak performance all the time. And that's not always because of fatigue. Some of that is just the nature of the game. But that is why we wanted to go out and make some additions, uh, just to take some pressure off the folks who are here. We know we've got some, some guys, uh, obviously Chris being the most prominent, who are coming back from injury, who can jump in. And, you know, we're going to do our best to make sure we schedule everybody to keep everybody healthy as we head down the stretch here. And in terms of it being what you characterize as a seller's market, you know, entering the deadline, if you would, if you had, would, would you have been surprised if someone told you in advance, you'll come away with a bat and, you know, in two, uh, in two, you know, two depth and two relief depth options? No, not necessarily. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know that there's an outcome that could have surprised me. There are a lot of different things that we explored, uh, including some longer term options that that would have also been impactful this year that, that you know, players better known and lesser known players uh, that we thought were really good fits for what we're trying to build. Uh, a lot of things that we were hoping to line up on uh, in that regard that we didn't. Uh, but I don't think you can ever be surprised. You know, like I said, I think we put in the same amount of work and it's just as frenzied whether we make no moves or 10 moves or anywhere in between. Uh, it certainly felt, even going back to yesterday, the pace of the day, the amount of action that was happening, the profile of some of the players that were changing hands, especially the day before the deadline, that was a little different this year. It, it definitely, I think there was a different uh, pace to it and just a different uh and just a different tone, really, going back to yesterday morning, at least in terms of the conversations we were having. I am. How much are you counting on sale to, to being close to 100% in the last six weeks? Uh, well, you know, obviously, the closer to 100% he is, the better. When he's 100%, he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Um, I, I think that would, you know, we hope we get that. I, I think it's almost too much to ask uh, from someone coming back from what he's coming back from. It does happen sometimes. Look, wherever he is, he is. Um, we, you know, as I mentioned, it, it, we weren't going to let the fact that he was coming back stop us from trying to add to the group. 
Um, we also want to make sure if we were going to do that, we were going to do it in a way that, that we could justify and that we felt okay about when uh, we put our heads on, heads on the pillow tonight. Um, so we're, we're so excited to have him back, not just for what it's going to mean on the mound, but for what he's going to mean to the group, the competitor, the leader that he is. And uh, w- wherever he's at, you know, that, that's, that we're going to be excited about it. Hi, there was a report that uh, ownership encouraged you to make a push for Max Scherzer. I'm wondering if that's true, if you can address that at all. And secondly, if you had any sense of whether he would even accept a trade to Boston. Yeah, I, you know, I obviously can't, uh, can't, can't explain everything that, that gets out there. Uh, you know, I'm, without getting into any, uh, you know, specific, what, what, you know, I'm not going to address whether as a player who's not our player, what he may or may not have done. But I will say that report isn't true. Um, felt, we felt nothing but supported and encouraged by ownership. Obviously, talked to them a lot about different possibilities and things that we might do. Uh, but uh, there was never any pressure to do anything other than uh, what's right for the Red Sox and what's what's right for our goal of sustainable championship baseball. And just one follow up. What do you say to fans and maybe reaction reactionary media members like some of us on this call, including me, uh, who say that, you know, wish that maybe you had done a little bit more? Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, especially when things are flying uh, left and right like they have been the last 48 hours, any fan would love to see their team right in the thick of it. And, and you love to see your team, you know, making big moves. We would too. We just aren't going to do that. You know, when we think those moves are actually running counter to our goal. Uh, we know how high the expectations of our fans are. And if we do something for short-term gratification that has too high a long-term price, we're going to end up letting them down more than we're going to help them. It might be fun today. You, you may or may not get what you're hoping for over the last two months, but you certainly are going to pay the price for years to come. Like I said, there were some moves, including the ones that we made, where we did feel there was some price that we paid, and it was a price we were willing to pay. Uh, there were a lot of things you know, that were put to us where we just felt we're not doing our jobs, and ultimately we are going to let our fans down, um, whether it be tomorrow, whether it be next year, the year after, or all of the above, if we, if we do some of the things that we could have done to make more of a splash. Hi, you've mentioned that you know, sustained competitiveness is pretty much what you want and, and what you want to achieve. You're not willing to, to sacrifice that. What role did, we've talked about sale, but also Duran and Hauk and their ability to perhaps affect outcomes play in the, in the deadline decisions? And was there anything that could have you know, moved you to, to um, make a decision that may have created uh, a long-term problem, but a short-term uh, championship fix? Yeah, I mean, obviously those guys are a big part of what we're trying to do. Uh, so is everybody who's on this roster and, and a lot of guys uh, who are not on the active roster right now who may yet figure into this thing, whether they're on the IL or whether they're in Worcester or, or both. Um, you know, those are also some of the guys, as you can imagine, when you were trying to do uh, some of the things that, that we talked about over the last few days, those are the guys that other teams want. Um, the, 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 those are the price you're expected to pay. And ultimately we didn't feel that was worth it. Um, you know, you ask, are, are there things we would have been willing to do to sacrifice uh, the long term uh, for the short term? Yeah, uh, it's just a question of, you know, where's the right point, you know, walking that type. Um, I, I think it's very rare that you get an opportunity where you are uh, really boosting yourself in the short term and, and also helping yourself in the long term. You hope that you hope to do that. And sometimes uh, you are able to do that. But those moves are rare. And some of those you're dependent on you know, the market being in a specific place that really lines up. Most of the time, that's not the case. And I think when you're in a situation like this, uh, you are and we were willing, uh, you know, to make some of those sacrifices because we understand how precious a position we're in, how many things have to go right to be in first place in the American League East at the trade deadline. Uh, It's just a question of how much. And in a lot of these cases, we just felt like uh, there would be too much of a long-term sacrifice and we'd ultimately be letting our fans down and we would be in for a, a lot more losing than winning when you zoom out past the next two months. I'm in terms of... In terms of Schwarber's usage, um, have you spoken to him about catching at all? Is he willing to do that? Do you see that as a way to get his bat in there at all? We haven't talked about that. Um, you know, we did talk about the first base thing, obviously that being, uh, you know, more of a need, you might say, um, you know, we like our catchers. Uh, so I, I wouldn't necessarily rule anything out, but it's not, 
something I anticipate as a regular option. Um, I would bet, even though we haven't brought up to him, he's the type of guy that he would do it. Um, th this guy will do, you know, he, the first thing he said, uh, actually, just because of how much was going on, uh, BOH spoke to him first, and then I spoke to him. Uh, he's pumped up to be here. The, 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 basically, the first thing he said was, you know, how much he loves Boston, and, he, and he's here to help us win a championship. And I, I think I would bet that if he thinks something is going to help us do that, then he'd be willing to do it, just about whatever it is. I mean, you have a number of guys that you're going to face 40-man roster decisions on uh, coming up. Did you find the, the level of interest in those guys significant to a point where you feel like you could maybe have done get more done in the offseason as opposed to now? We'll see. Uh, there were certainly moves, uh, you know, the, that uh, we discussed uh, that could have we, where we could have, uh, you know, moved some of those guys now. Um, obviously, again, if it had been something we felt was worth it, we would have done it. Um, and we just didn't, you know, we, we, there were, I went into the week thinking we might line up on more of those than we actually did. You know, it just, it just didn't line up in all cases. Uh, obviously, um, you know, it did a little bit in the two deals that we made today. Um, so it was definitely something we explored. You know, I, I said it coming into the week and kind of, you know, going back a few weeks, that is definitely something we're mindful of. And it's still going to be an issue that we're going to have to navigate going forward. So we put value on it this week. It was a factor in our discussions. Um, but ultimately, you know, we lined up on the, on the things that we lined up on. And do you see David, do you, do you see Davis coming to the, uh, to the big league roster right away? Yeah. Um, that's our, that's our expectation. Uh, you know, he, he, he does have an option left. So, um, you know, we may have some movement obviously over the course of the month, as we know, we have guys that are working their way back and, uh, different things that could happen. Uh, but you know, that's our expectation at least to start. Um, is there any concern just uh, with Schwarber at first, you know, with the hamstring and kind of coming off the IL and, and also, you know, Christian Arroyo obviously trying that position and also, you know, suffering an injury too. Is there concern just since he's never played there before? Yeah, for sure. We got to be careful with it as we explore this. And like I said, it's not a necessity. If it does not happen, um, then, you know, we still feel really good about what he's going to bring to the table. And we have to make sure we're doing it in a way that doesn't jeopardize his health more than anyone's health is at risk by being out on the baseball field because uh, it's too important that we keep him healthy. So, so he can, he can hit and have an impact in our lineup. If I'm with, the, with, with Duran up, um, you know, obviously it's, it's kind of a crowded outfield mix um, already. So it, let's say, you know, Schwarber at first base doesn't work exactly as you hope. And, and he goes back to left field. Is that something you know, you're mindful of that could be a tricky situation considering how many guys you have out there? Yeah. Um, you know, that could happen. Uh, this was something where we were, we were good erring on the side of having too many good players, even if a lot of them might end up playing the same position. Uh, you know, I, I talked about that coming into this where, uh, you know, we were just as open to adding to a strength, uh, as we were plugging a hole in this case, uh, you know, we, we may end up having done both depending on how this works out, but, you know, we know that who we have now is who we're going to have different things happen. Um, and even if everybody's healthy, uh, you can get guys rest when you otherwise might not be able to, you can play matchups better. You can have impactful players coming off the bench. There are all sorts of ways that, that adding to a strength can help you win games. Uh, so we're mindful of it. Um, it's going to, you know, and, you know, we discussed it with Alex over the last couple of days, especially as the Schwarber thing were taking, was taking shape, you know, it, would it, if he had 10 years of first base experience, would this be a cleaner fit? Absolutely. Um, again, I would not bet against this guy and he is going to be motivated to figure it out. And I think that uh, he's got a good chance to, but even if it doesn't, I think it gives Alex a lot of interesting options. And uh, you know, you guys know how adept he is at using the players that he has at his disposal. And, you know, once Kyle's healthy, he's going to have a, a really impactful player to add to this mix to help win ball games. Hi, I mean, you mentioned, you know, other teams kind of being in a better position to be more aggressive right now because of what they've done in the past to get here. How close do you feel like you are to being in that position? Um, it's a good question. I, you know, I, I think it's, it's obviously relative. Um, just because you're in a great position doesn't necessarily mean you want to go out and do something irresponsible. I think a lot depends, but, but, but it makes it makes you more able to be aggressive without feeling like you're being irresponsible. If you have depth, if you have redundancy, 
uh, you know, it's easier to, uh, you know, use, you know, players and trades than it is if you're dependent on them with, with, with nothing behind them. So even when you're in that position and we see some clubs that are able to sustain this winning for a long period of time, it's because they keep generating young talent, whether they bring it back in trades, whether they uh, generate it through their system. And we need to be in that position too. Um, so I, I, I don't know if there's like a, you know, a finish line that I can look at, you know, I just know that uh, at least in my opinion, some of the things that were put in front of us, uh, I didn't feel like they made sense given the, the, the entire context. Yeah, we can take a couple more. We have to get Alex in for his pregame session before tonight's game. Go ahead. Just from a historical context, how would you evaluate, you know, this deadline with the quality of star level talent that moved and also the prospects uh, that moved generally, you know, the deadline at times seems to fall a little short uh, from where the expectations are. What, what do you, how would you evaluate this deadline? And I'd, I'd probably need to get at least one good night of sleep before uh, I could properly answer that question. Um, it's probably best for other people to assess. Uh, you know, it certainly seemed pretty active. Look, I think it's great for baseball when that happens. We talked about it before that, uh, you know, every, a fan of any team likes to see their team in the headlines. Uh, we sometimes need to look past that in terms of the things that, that we do and don't do. Um, but it, it was active. Uh, I think the thing that stood out to me, because, you know, players change hands every year at a time like this. Like I said, the thing that stood out to me sort of being in, in our room, so to speak, was how early it sort of felt like deadline day. Even going back to yesterday morning, the same urgency, the same pace was there that some years you don't really even see sink in until 10 or 11 a.m. on the day of the deadline. That stood out to me. All right. There's nothing else. Thank you, Heim. Thanks, everyone, for your time and uh, joining us on, on here. And I'll let Justin uh, get uh, Alex Core ready for his pregame session. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your patience. Sorry to be late.